Hi, and welcome to this week's Auspicious Agile video blog. This is John Okoro. This week we're going to be taking a look at our blockchain and cryptocurrency series and taking a look at uh, blockchain. First of all, please do click the like button below to like the video and click subscribe below and also the alert bell so you get updates on the latest Auspicious Agile video blogs. Now, let's take a look. This week we're going to take a look at what is the big deal about blockchain. Blockchain, you hear it all over the place, Bitcoin, all these things. We're going to take kind of a no-hype look and get basically an understanding of what is it all about and why does it really matter. So to start, we're going to take a look at going back to 2008. Blockchain was originally introduced by Satoshi Nakamoto. Now, Satoshi Nakamoto, we really don't know who this person or people or group, man or woman, we don't really know who it is. Um, but they introduced open source Bitcoin and the blockchain as a solution uh, for decentralized financing and payments. And the reason for this was, of course, in 2008, there was a great financial crisis in the U.S., which impacted the entire world, actually. Um, banks lost a lot of money. There was a lot of money lost in people's retirements, 50%. People lost houses. Very damaging to the entire world economy. And Satoshi Nakamoto basically wanted to prevent this type of thing from happening again. So by decentralizing the financial system and transactions and not having any one single point of control, whether a government or a bank or otherwise, was the idea behind the blockchain and the open source code that was originally introduced to provide the blockchain and Bitcoin as we know it. Now, as a side note, on January 3rd of 2009 was the first Bitcoin transaction that was processed uh, using the blockchain. Now, let's take a look at, of course, blockchain's first killer app, as we know, is Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin has been in the news a lot. There was a big, quote, crash recently, but also it's still $8,000, over $8,000, uh, I think like $8,700 recently. It had gone over $10,000. Market capitalization for cryptocurrency, I think, was over $800 million, come down a bit. But uh, at the time that Bitcoin first came out, you could buy two pizzas with like 10000 of them. Compare that to one Bitcoin being worth almost $9,000 today. Um, you can see that this has certainly been going up in value. There's a lot of different coins, a lot of different currencies that go on the blockchain. But actually, the big deal is really the blockchain. The blockchain itself is an amazing technology, and it's as much of a jump forward as a PC revolution or the Internet was, and I don't exaggerate here. The decentralization that it introduces, the ability to run transactions and have trust even when you don't have a central institution running them, is very powerful. And this is something that's being used a lot by many different types of companies, well-known ones and new startups all over the world. And you can use it for things like banking and financial transactions, of course. You can use smart contracts, as they call them, on the blockchain uh, to make agreements. And you can, if you're a farmer or, let's say, somebody in a developing country and you want to tokenize your assets or raise funding, you can do that. You can put your funds and raise capital or participate in crowdfunding. There's all types of ways that you can use the blockchain. It's very powerful. It goes far beyond just Bitcoin, even though Bitcoin is obviously the first killer app. Now... Some of the key aspects of the blockchain are its infrastructure, and a lot of the key projects right now are in the area of infrastructure. So the scalability, security, and decentralization of the, uh, of the blockchain. Now, in terms of scalability, I want you to compare this with Visa or Alipay, which can transact and run tens or thousands or thousands of transactions per second. The blockchain can only transact seven transactions per second. That's right, seven. So this is pretty slow right now. So a lot of people are trying to address scalability uh, to make this workable. Uh, people like the Lightning Network, which is a very hot thing that's coming out right now, to try to add a second layer on top of the blockchain. There is Radix and Hashgraph. Uh, and Hashgraph, actually, Hashgraph is another technology, but it's also distributed ledger technology or distributed technology as well. Uh, and these are to address scalability. Now, another area is security. How do you know that what I sent you or you sent me is actually going to get through and it's not going to be tampered with or meddled with or hacked? So this is a very key underlying infrastructure area. And then that it remains decentralized. So the idea is that nobody, no matter how much money they have or whether they're a government or whatever it is, controls the entire blockchain. The idea is to keep it decentralized and distributed across many people so that you don't have a revisit of what happened in 2008 is the idea. And it is kept global. And you have people called miners. I'm sure you've probably heard of uh, Bitcoin mining by now. 
These are people who verify the transactions using cryptography, and for doing that, they get a fee. So they get a little bit of a fraction of a Bitcoin every time they're the first to verify a transaction. Now, there are lots and lots of projects that are out there, big ones like Disney's Dragon Chain, uh, Token, the Lightning Network, Beluga Bank Online for giving developing countries access to capital, Gibraltar Blockchain Exchange, Microsoft Blockchain ID. You can see big names and small. So lots of people are involved in this and tokens are associated with projects. So these are cryptocurrency tokens. Now we'll look a lot more at the ICO, which is the initial coin offering soon in an upcoming video blog. But it's important to know that people are raising a ton of money this way, $15 million, $30 million. And these are people who in the past would not have had access to funding necessarily because they weren't part of the venture capital network or the banking kind of inside circle. Uh, so this is a big change in democratizing financing for many people and allowing the little guy around the world access as well to funding. Now, there are some restrictions that different governments are putting in. I think China had some that they put in recently, the U.S., uh, has some restrictions, although you can certainly participate and purchase cryptocurrency. Uh, so a lot of things there. So lots to think about. And as always, if you enjoy the Auspicious Agile video blogs, please do subscribe, like, and click the reminders. You can also support on Patreon and on Amazon with the links below or in the video uh, links. And uh, as always, stay agile. And thanks so much for listening.